Composite beam. That means that there are two types of material is there. It happens a lot. Let's say that you are trying to you have a building there or a structure there, and to do that, you can put two beams next to each other. Extra, you know, beam. That way you're only increasing I twice. Everybody agrees on that. Why? If I put one beam here has an I of so much, and I put another beam next to it like that, the I become twice only. Correct or not? Why? Because I is usually is 112 of base time height cubic. So when the base increases, so who, who cares? It still is twice. 2B become twice. Is that correct? However, if you put the two beam on top of each other, then what happened? The I become much larger. You have to understand that from this static. So you put the two beam on top of each other, then the I become tremendously higher because the Y changes. Y goes from four inch to eight inch. It's not double. Four to the power of three is totally different from eight to the power of three. See how much difference between the two is? However, doing it that way does not make sense economically because you, first of all, you, you don't have sometimes the space to do that. Sometimes because of uh, uh, cost, so you, this is a not a right decision because your, your beam strength suddenly become 10 times more, is that correct? And you need only 50% more or 100%. In that case, you, sometimes you don't even have to ruin, uh, ruin the ceiling material. You go on the roof, you cover that one, and you put just a piece of metal on top, for example, let's assume it is a wood structure. All you have to do, put a metal on top. Is that correct or not? Therefore, it become a composite beam. It is part of a beam is, so this is what I'm saying, that the part of a beam, if you do it this way, first of all, this is the wood beam, and then you only put a metal on top. The length, we are not talking about length of the beam, this cover, so it become a composite beam, and I, asked, I discussed that last time, how do we treat that? How we treat that, we have to change the wood into steel, or a steel into would both option are available. Now let's do the example because I did not finish it. So the discussion, remember that at the beginning you have to change it. At the end, again, you have to change it as well when you calculate the stresses. Is that understood that? So for that reason, in your handout, there is a problem in your handout. We are going to do that. In your handout, I believe it's page three of your handout. There are a few more copies here in case you need it. So on the page of three, page three of your handout, there is a problem there for this purpose. So it is a rectangular shape wood, wood beam. The height of the beam is given equal to, I believe, 10 inches. And the width of the beam is given six inches. So it's a six inch by 10 inch wood. This is just for practice purposes. What's the purpose of adding a steel here is not the, what I was talking about. For this particular beam, they have added a little piece of metal here, a little piece of metal there, or a strip of the metal. This is, again, is the cross section. The length goes whatever. We don't care at this time. We are not concerned about the length of the beam. So the beam goes like that. Everybody see what I'm talking about. So here it is, and then we have added two inch height and three eight of an inch thickness strip here. So if the beam looks something like that, so all you have to do, put a little strip here and a little strip there, everybody understand. And you are showing it the cross section, so the strip goes like that on both sides, correct? On the bottom of the beam. Now, the data that we usually will give you is the following. We, I have, this is, this is wood and this part do two parts are steel, symmetrical, so actually in that respect remains symmetrical. So therefore, I'm going to give you E of a steel equal to 29 times 10 to the power of 6 PSI, and then E of the wood, which much weaker comparatively in this problem, is given 1 and half times 10 to the power of 6 PSI, and the M is a positive M of 200 
kips inch of the moment being applied to the cross section of this beam. In other words, the cross section of the beam, if we go side view, this is again is the side view. This is the M, which means compression on top, tension on the bottom. Notice, if this is the cross section, I cannot calculate the Y bar. I cannot calculate the I because there are two different material. Again, we have two options here. We can change the steel into wood or wood into steel. That all depends on how you start your problem. I'm going to explain that again one more time here. The N usually is the ratio of the modulus of elasticity. You can take the N larger than one, so let's call it this way, which get, gives you the following scenario. E of steel over E of the wood become equal to, for this problem, become 29 times 10 to the power of 6 divided by 1 and a half times 10 to the power of 6, which for this problem is a ratio of 20 to 1. Technically, in effect, E of steel is 20 times larger than E of steel. When you do that, that means I have to multiply this thickness. First of all, remember what we said here. We cannot change the y, the height. We cannot change the height. Remember, epsilon was dependent on the height, uh, the y. So if I change that, it's the, uh, I cannot do that because that changes the whole scenario. But I can change the width of the material. Is that correct? Or because in the width of the material, the stress was uniform. So I can do that. Therefore, when I use that ratio of 21, that means this still has to be expanded into larger area. Of course, that become a wood. So when n is larger than one, write it down. That become all weakest material. So it become all wood. Is that correct or not? The alternative to that, which we can use, but I put it on the other side because I'm not going to use that, is using n less than one. That means I, I can use E of the wood over E of still which become 120. Remember, this is less than one. That means that the thickness of the wood should be shrink 120 at size in order to become equivalent to steel, because I, have, I need less steel to be replacing wood. So you have two options. So for some problem, you have to look at it to see which one is easier, because sometimes there are more work. I'll show you at the end after I finish this, which one is more appropriate. For this problem, does not make any difference? So I'm going to use this one. Is that correct or not? You will think that one, it means all wood. Everybody understand that. Why? Because this 20 is larger than one. So I have to multiply this still by that ratio. So how much wood would replace this much still? I have 3 8 of an inch of steel become equivalent to, that's equivalent, not exactly equal, equivalent of 3 8 of an inch of uh, multiplied by 20. So it becomes equal to 7 and a half inch of wood. So in other words, 7 and a half inch of wood is equivalent to 3 8 of a stick because the ratio was 20 to 1. Is that correct or not? As the result, your section ends up to this section. So here is your section. The wood remain exactly the same. So this is 6 inches. The height is 10 inches. Suddenly, you see here, instead of 3 quarter of an inch, you see, sorry, I have to be on the same level. You see there, equal to 7 and a half inch here, 7 and a half inch here. Height cannot change. As I said, the Y cannot change here. So that become this much still. So it has to be exactly the same because it's symmetrical. So should I show you this a little bit shorter? So let's assume these are this. Which, back to, this is all wood. Is that correct? Now I can use the same technique I used before to solve it. Now notice the centroid has changed, and I have to find the eye. Is that correct? I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of time. I already did that. That's the, that's the whole idea of it. Last class, I used a T-section. And I calculate the y bar and the moment of inertia. I'm not going to repeat that. But remember that this is 2 inch, this is 7 and a half and 6 and 6. This is 6 inch. And this height is 8 inch because the total was 10 inches. Is that correct or not? Therefore, you calculate first 
the centroid. So if I put the centroid, which will be the neutral axis, you have to use all wood now. That we did it, so it is that. So you get 3.67, I believe. Yeah, six seven. So if this become your first, you put your x here. So you call this one y bar. That's what I did last time. You put your x axis here. You you calculate all the q's and you calculate with respect to this x axis divided by area to calculate y bar which is, well, notice what happened again. To review your static, because I need this for chapter six as well, when the x is here, this area and this area, the second area have a q here, as I did it last time, remember that? If the x is here, then become, q become different. Is that correct or not? If k, x keep moving up here, 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 when it gets here, notice some q's are above the line, some q's are? below the line, and we proved that several times in the static classes, and here I mentioned that the Q of the above and Q of the below become equal and opposite in order total Q to become equal to zero. Why? Because now I'm changing this X to this X. Everybody, I'm suddenly changing my force from here. In order to be at that point, with respect to this axis, of course, Y bar must be equal to zero. Is that understood what I'm saying there? Therefore, after we calculate that, this is 3.67. So this distance I need, which is the balance with respect to 10, so it is 6.33 inches. The problem is resolved. Now it's back to the exactly the same problem as I did last time. Is that correct or not? Yes? Let's calculate the sigma here, point A. Right there. That is wood. It was wood. Still is wood. Is that correct or not? Therefore, what's the sigma at that point? Sigma, we call it wood at material wood, but it is in tension or compression according to your moment. It is in compression. Therefore, it becomes minus. How much moment did we have there? I have written it here. 200, the unit work, kips inch, multiplied by 6.33 inches. And this is pound inch, or kips inch, I'm sorry need to raise it, kips inch. So if we get the answer in KSI, kips inch, and that's inch divided by I, oh, I forgot to put you the I with respect to the neutral axis. By the way, this axis, whether it's X or Z, doesn't matter. This is the neutral axis that passes through the centroid. So I, again, I calculating I with respect to this X axis, you need parallel axis. Theorem, I asked you to study that, so I cannot help you in that department anymore unless you ask me a question. By the way, there is no quiz today for either classes, so today office hour would be very empty, so it's a good chance for you to have all your questions being answered. So if you want to come to office hour, today is the day. Is that understood? Okay? Don't be lonely there. Don't leave me lonely there. Is that correct? <laughs> nobody showed up. If there is no quiz, nobody shows up. 810 each to the power of four. Yes? Okay, so therefore, now we have to calculate sigma at point A, which is the old wood, so, or in this point there, and that is divided by 830, so therefore, uh, inch to the power of four, so it becomes minus 1.525 KSI. Since it is wood, we better do it in PSI, so 1,525 PSI, that's the same thing. Usually when it is wood or weaker material, we say PSI when it is a steel or a stronger, maybe go with KSI because that's usually the case. Yes or no? Then how about this point, point B here? That point was wood, still is wood. The only difference is that it is in the tension zone. Is that correct or not? So it's still sigma in wood. So you can call it sigma max if you want. So it's wood max, sigma max, but this time in wood, the same thing, or however you write it, doesn't matter, will be in tension. Yes or no, I've calculated tension. That would be, you can use the ratio, remember? I can use the ratio of 3.67 over that one because it is linear. We talk about it because the stress is linear. I can do that, or I can recalculate that. That's the same thing. So 200 times 3.67 divided by 830, which is equal to uh, point 0.8, where is it, yeah, point 
884 KSI or equal to 884 PS. Of course, it is less because it's less distance. This distance is almost half of that, so it's stress become half. Yes? Linear. However, how about the stress in the steel? Don't we, are we interested to find the stress in the steel? I need to find stress here now. If this is the maximum stress in the steel. We don't care about the top of it. Still, all of the steel is in the tension zone. Is that correct? So the steel will be in tension zone, all of it. And we want the highest value of stress in the steel. So I go to the furthest point. You remember that? We have to go furthest distance. Is that correct? So will be the bottom. What's that? How do we calculate that? What? You should have the answer right now. What? What should I do? I already calculated without you realizing. Is that, what is the stress at that level? 884 psi per square. P, what is psi? It means that many pound per square inch of wood. But in this area, it, that shows. Yes, so 884 pound per square inch of wood. But this was not wood originally. That was? So what should I do? Sure. 20 inches, square inches of wood equal to one square inch of steel. Is that correct or not? So I have to multiply that stress by? By 20, by N again. That's the adjustment that I mentioned last time. So sigma maximum in steel which definitely will be in tension. All you have to do, look, you have to shrink this back. So you have to bring all those stresses and put it in one square inch, is, if I had that. Is that because the sigma is the unit? Sigma is the amount of pound per square inch, but you, you expanded it, yes or no? Then you have to bring it back so all the stresses come together, all the forces come together back. Is that correct or not? So 20 square inch of wood equal to one square inch of? Still, therefore, all you have to do, get that point, point 0.884 KSI. You have, all you have to do, multiply it by the N as if, as if this is what you are qu quite frankly doing. This is 20 square inch, 20 inch square, suddenly become one inch square. But here you have 844, 884, tw 20 times, and you have to put it all there. Is that correct or not? Very simple. But I'm saying it this way, so at, actually you will see it becomes 17.7, 17.7 KSI, and almost 18 KSI, which is half the sigma yield of a steel. The steel has 36, a standard steel has 36 KSI units, so you have a factor of this. You see how much, how much help the steel is there. Is that correct or not? Yes? Okay? All right. Now, for some of your homework, you have to decide now. So I'm just giving you a few hints because that's all you need. So you change it at the beginning. You either go from stronger material, all stronger material, or all weaker material. Here I had all weaker material because I choose n equal to 20. If I would have n equal to 1 over 20, then I'll make it all stronger, all steel. So you choose your system. So if you have here, I want you to understand a few of your homework. I don't know how many homework I gave you, maybe two or three. So if you have a plate on top and you have a plate on the bottom and you expand it, this becomes similar to just what I did, except it becomes symmetrical. Everybody understand what I'm saying that? Because both plates are going to expand. Centroid again remain the same. However, as I said it here, I don't want to touch the, the ceiling. Sometimes we do this. Yes? If we do that, then we don't have that one. Is that everybody understand? Then system become a T section. I'll show you the T section already. Then there are other options that sometimes you have a pile, pile or beam or whatever. Let's say it has a, a hollow tube still filled with concrete. So this is concrete. I think there is a problem like that. These are all steel and concrete. Which one is easier to change? I, I want you to understand, you, have to, you cannot make a mistake here. The only thing you can change is the width, not the height. Did you make a point of that in your notes? So everybody should write that, because you cannot change the epsilon. Epsilon was equal to minus y over rho. We cannot touch the y. 
because what we can go horizontally as much as we want. Therefore, let's say that this box is 10 inches by 10 inches, and let's say the thickness of one inch box. Notice if I want to increase this 10 inch, this 10 inch has to be multiplied by 20, yes? But here I only have one inch. One inch has to be multiplied by 20. Here again I have to, so it is easier rather than do all of that, it is easier to change the concrete into still, yes or no? Because there is only one change. So in that case you shrink the concrete, depends on the ratio. Of course, you, because symmetrical, you put this much still at the middle. So in each problem you decide which way is the uh, uh, same amount of work, at the end you end up with the same amount of work. One or other does not any advantage over the bigger. If it is a T-section, it still end up with a T-section, a little bit smaller or bigger, that's the only thing. 20 times bigger or 20 times smaller. Everybody understand that. However, sometimes it's to your advantage to decide which, which method to use. Is that correct or not? Yes? Okay. So that's it. Now, I have one more problem here which has a lot to do with your understanding of the, of the st stress distribution. I was going to skip that, but then I decided it was a good example to discuss it with you guys. So this is not in your handout, so please write it down. So let's see what you come up with this answer for this problem. So that's it. All the, or except, uh, all the composite beam, you use this technique. It's very simple. You just change it at the beginning. You change it at the end. Don't forget to change it at the end, your stresses for the material that being changed. Now, this is another problem, so please write it down here. This is a box again. Let's say it is wood, so it is built like that. Four pieces of wood put together like that. This is uh, 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter square. The thickness is 20. Each thickness is 20 all around, 20, 25, 25, 25 millimeter thickness there. And when we look at it sideways again, this is the cross section. Again, I want you to understand that this is the cross section. It's like this, it's hollow at the middle. And then when you look at it sideways, uh, we see this. Of course, then you see a line here, you see a line there. And we have put here m equal to, I believe, in this problem, we put m equal to 5,000. 5,000 meter meter. I want you to answer the first part of this question is repeat, so, but it just makes us to think again about the stress distribution. I want you to calculate the stress at A. Then I want you to calculate the stress at B. So these are the questions you want to answer. Sigma A, very simple. Sigma B should be simple. And this is the question that I want you to think about it. What percentage of M being taken by, taken by the top and by the top and bottom piece. So in other words, what percentage of this moment that is there is taken by these two pieces? Notice there are four pieces here. They are almost equal, not exactly. They are almost equal in size. Everybody thinks at the beginning, since there are equal areas, two and two, so therefore each part takes half a part. Is that true or not? Do you think the top two portion that I've had, the top board and the bottom board, will take the same amount of the moment at these two? Yes or no, before we do any calculation? No, okay, so you gave me the right answer, why? <laughs> That's what, what we want this. This is all, what? No, that's not, uh, of course one part is tension, one part is compression, that, there, no, that, that is top part, this from here, uh, first of all centroid is here, centroid is at the middle, so that's not the, upper part is in compression, lower part is in tension, that's not the point. Well, let's look at it later on, maybe, as we go along, yes? No. Not because it's hollow. What? Is there more force at the top and the bottom? 
Yeah, exactly. Well, look at the stress distribution. Guys, look at this. something you haven't looked at it later. What the stress distribution look for? The, this, the any beam. I gave it to you. Wasn't that it was a, a linear? What's the stress at the center, by the way? Quite frankly, you don't need any material at the center. That's why it is hollow. Is that kind of, as you go up, you need more material because the stress is more concentrated on top and on the bottom. You should do the same thing for the shaft. I probably didn't mention it, but it's a good time to mention it in the previous chapter. This is a shaft, yes? It is solid. Do you think the shaft should be solid or should be hollow? Which one is better? What's the stress at the center of the shaft? So why do you want any material to, to resist that? There is nothing there to resist. Is that correct or not? Yes? So therefore, all the real shafts actually are hollow because the stresses are all maximum stresses are on the outside and we go inside, the stress becomes less and less. Here is the same thing, guys. I'm leaving that. You want to just listen or you want to make a note of that. This is wood for wood. Because wood is less expensive, but it's not good for a steel. Yes, sort of, because steel is very expensive and very heavy too at the same time. And very, you have to pay for it, yes? However, since the stress distribution is like this, remember that? Compression and that's all to do that. Look, here there is no stress. If it is no stress, I don't need that, that much material, yes? So therefore, why not cut this material to the lower that's why it ends up like that. Remember that the still part? Remember that we saw it in the static classes? Yes? So all the eye beam, or the way, because you don't need any material at the center, you need the material on top and bottom. Now that I explained that, we should, you should have known it because I already gave you the stress distribution. Everybody understand? This is all, so this is what I'm saying, that guy. You want to become a good engineer, it's not sufficient for you just to learn sigma equal to MC over I. That doesn't do you any good. Correct? Look how much information goes through this system. This is the one you should think about all the time. Is that correct or not? That's the one I show you at the beginning through the formula. I said forget about all the formula. At least remember the stress distribution in the cross section. That was answer to my question today. Is that understood that? Yes or no? So what do you think? Do you think these two are going to participate more? than these two, yes or no? Of course that's the case. Yeah, that the answer would be much, maybe 70% goes to the two, top and bottom, 30% goes to the middle because there are less stresses there. Is that understood? So let's see whether that's the fact. That's the one I want to you calculate. What percentage of M, which is how much M do we have? 5,000. Area wise, let's assume they are equal. They are not going to get the same amount of the forces as you were explaining. The forces going in, the forces coming, out the forces on top is much larger than the forces at the mid. Actually, on the centroid, this force is zero. Is that correct or not? Force zero, epsilon zero, sigma zero. Nevertheless, let's finish this problem. First of all, centroid is at the middle. Is everybody agrees? This is symmetrical, yes? Next, you need to calculate the value of I with respect to neutral axis. This is the centroid, and this is the neutral axis. Is that correct or not? Which, again, you can do parallel axis story. Why? For this one, actually, I'll show you another method because you already know that probably. And that is, since this is symmetrical, you can go I of outside minus I of inside. Don't break it into four pieces. It is easier. Nevertheless, that is your job to do. I'm not going to mention that. And I end up to be equal to 91.15 times 10 to the power of minus 6 meter to the power of four. Remember last time I showed you how to calculate it in millimeter, then convert it into meter by going from plus six to minus six. So that's the answer, anyhow, everybody should come up with that. Is that very simple? Then we want to calculate sigma A. These are very simple. Sigma A will be in compression mode, yes or no, correct? This is compression, compression, tension, and tension. Look how the moment is there. If I change the direction the moment, then everything changes. This is all depend on the direction of the moment. The way I have given each problem, it will be given to you. So what's sigma A here? This is point level of A. This is level of B. Is that correct or not? So at A, we have compression and compression, correct? As A and B, both of them. Minus, so you put minus there, 5,000. Newton meter 
multiplied by what? Multiplied by the CC is measured from centroid to the top, which is 100 millimeter, so 0.1 meter. divided by I, which is 91.15 times 10 to the power of minus. This repeat, I said keep this for your mega, multiply this three and divide by this two divided by that one. So you get there minus 5.49. This goes to the numerator and become your mega. So it becomes that many mega Pascal or that many times 10 to the power of six. Correct? Newton per meter squared. Now we can calculate sigma b. For the sigma b, obviously, I cannot use mc over i. I have to use m y over i. Remember that? So therefore, it is m. It is negative. m y over i. Is that correct or not? Yes. i is 75 because this is 25 millimeter. This is this distance from here to here is 75 millimeter. Again, I can use the ratio if I want. So if in the solution manual they take this number, they multiply it by 75 millimeter divided by 100 because they are using the tri triangle rule. Everybody understand that because they're lined, therefore you can use the ratio. Is that correct or not? Yes. Some people do not. I have seen even the student in ME219 come to me. They see that in the solution manual. They don't understand. I say, what did they come and ask me? What is this? We don't know what's coming. You're coming because the stress distribution is, I erase it there somewhere. I'll show you. The stress distribution is linear. Is that correct? Anyhow, or you can recalculate that. Recalculating is more work, but that's it. So that's 5,000 times. 0.075, that's the only number is changing. Remember, divided by 91.15 times 10 to the power, which become minus 4.11 megapascal. So I have calculated the stresses point A and B, part A and part B answered, which as I said, this was repeat. Is that correct or not? How do I calculate part <coughs> C? What percentage of this moment being taken by the top and bottom? Obviously, I have to calculate forces going in and forces coming out. So I need, again, the stress distribution. Everybody see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to do it here. So this is what we are talking about. Okay, in general, in any beam doesn't make any difference. Of any cross section, when you have a moment like that, here is compression, here is tension. I have drawn that many, many times just to bring to your attention, yes or no. For our problem now, this changes a little bit. It's hollow or doesn't hollow, doesn't make any difference. But all we want to understand is the following. I don't need this because my, this is my lower and this is the upper board. This is the side view again, yes? So we already calculated that, and we already calculated that. Erase this part. You don't need that part. Is that what it, we are coming up? This was 5.49 megapascal, and this was 4.11 megapascal. Stress are forces going in in compression format. Yes, sir. Can I calculate the amount of force there? Yes? How? Come on, guys. This is lecture one, AB 218. <laughs> force, sigma equal to force over area. It's very simple, guys. Anytime you have that, you have like a pressure. It's your pressure comes here. Then you want to calculate the force, you multiply this pressure by the area, yes or no? Sigma is the same thing, because lecture one, lesson one. Sigma equal to force over Area, yes or no? So if I want the force, actually, usually you have the force, then you do that. It becomes equal to sigma times area. The only problem is, is sigma here is constant or is a variable? If sigma was constant, all I have to do could take that sigma, multiply it by that area, that becomes the amount of force going in. Everybody see what I'm talking about? So the result of that one, is a force, I'm showing the force in color, guys. So it will be the resultant of all these stresses going in 
is the force, I call it here, Fc. Is that correct or not? I'm looking for that Fc. And the resultant of this force going out, it should be Ft. The two are equal and, because in this case, because the stresses are exactly the same. Notice, is this a couple? So if I find the distance between the two, I can find how much couple taken by these. That, you see, this is what I want you to think. When I put this, this is imaginary. This actually always is like that. Everybody understand that? The formation of the stress make it looks like a couple. Forces coming, going in, forces coming out, or stresses, because force over the area becomes stress. Stresses going out, stresses going in. The only difference between this and lecture one was there. Sigma was always was a constant. It was uniform. Is that correct? Yeah. So I can always multiply here. I have, if by the way, in the book they use the integration. It doesn't need, you need, don't need the integration because this is a line so I can average it. Everybody understand that. So I can find the average sigma on top and on the bottom. Everybody see that because it's linear again. But if this was a parabola, and a parabola, then I had to integrate mathematically. But we don't get that sophisticated, not yet. Is that understood? Yes? But technically, you can do that. Nevertheless, your f this is you first calculate this. Because since I'm calculating these forces, I put it in, color, in this color. Sigma average on top or bottom. One is in tension, one is in. One is in compression, one is in tension. Doesn't matter. You have it there. You put a minus there. You average it 5.49 plus 4.11 divided by 2 minus, because we are calculating for the top. And it becomes minus 4.8 megapascal. Instead of these two, I'm reducing it to that. Everybody understand. Now it is a constant sigma. Constant sigma multiplied by area becomes the force. Is that correct or not? Therefore, then the sigma, now I can calculate by force, Fc. Fc becomes sigma times A. Sigma average times area on top. Now, this is the area. So please write it down. Area, A of area of the board above, because we are only talking about this board there. So that A, sigma is 4 point, minus 4.8 megapascal, which is 10 to the power of 6 pascal, which is Newton per meter square, multiplied by area, which is meter square. Therefore, the answer would be in. Newton, which is the unit of force. Is that correct or not? So how much area do we have there? It is 200 by 25. That's simple enough. Now that you get the idea, you understand what I'm saying. That that's 200, of course, you have to put it in meter because you want to drop it meter by meter square by multiplied by 0 0.025. And the answer becomes equal to minus uh, 24,000. Newton. Exactly. So this force is 24,000 Newton going in. This force is 24,000 coming out. Notice this is a couple, yes or no? That couple is part of that couple, is that correct? But not the entire couple, because this part also participate to a certain degree. But this is the highest load because the stress is on top and bottom. That's what I was saying earlier. It is stress on top and bottom are ex Now, all you have to do, find the centroid of this trapezoidal trapezoid. It's not that simple. But if you are assuming this is right at the middle, the distance from here to here, this is 12 and a half. This is 12 and a half. So the distance from here to here becomes 175. So we are talking about from middle of this, middle of this, which is not the correct answer, not the exact answer. Everybody understands. But since this is a trapezoid, and then here is there, if this was a class exercise, you did not, you, I don't give you enough time to do that, so you assume the centroid is at the middle, which is not. Everybody understands that. So however, I, ca I can give you the distance to you, the exact distance. This exact distance, if you use the centroid of a uh, trapezoid here and here, become 176.2, only one millimeter extra. Everybody understand, because the centroid is a little bit higher. Everybody understand what I'm saying. That. Nevertheless, the amount of M taken by the top and the bottom, as I said, that here become 24,000. We need the magnitude. Newton multiplied by 0 0.1762 
meter, 176.2 meter. When you calculate that one, it end up to be 4,222 Newton meter. How much of that moment is that? More than 80 percent. Everybody see that? Yes? The percentage, if you want to calculate the percentage, the percentage would be equal to 4.229 over 5,000 multiplied by 100. So it is become equal to actually 84.6. Almost 85% of this moment, it, uh, in other words, I do not need those middle pieces. Is that if this was a steel, I just connect that with a little piece in between. Is that correct or not? Yes? Of course, that, the ideal beam would be material here, material here, nothing in between, a string between. But that doesn't work because we have to also think about shear stresses, which comes in chapter 6. Is that understood? Yes? Any question? That give you, again, another insight into this, this stress system. The most important part of your system, again, is not thinking about sigma equal to P over A or sigma equal to MC over I, etc. It is the stress distribution for the shaft. I mentioned that. Here for the beam. Is that correct or not? Now we come to the last part of this, this chapter, which is eccentric lo loading. Please write it down and the combined loading or et cetera, which is the most misunderstood part of this chapter by a student. The reason is they don't think this way. They always want to get the answer from sigma equal to mc over i, and the answer is not there. Everybody understands. Now I'm going to make it very clear for you, because I have seen a student usually have lots of problem with this system. However, look at it. I want to repeat some of the material that we already did in the last three chapters. So before we go any further, notice in chapter one and two, we were talking about sigma equal to plus minus n over a. What was n? I purposely did not put p over a. I put n over a, because n is the normal force to the cross-section. Now, why I'm saying that? It's very obvious. I give a quiz to the ME219 at the beginning of to test their knowledge of ME218 in my class this quarter. Yeah, I give them this, of course, this rod, and I put here a P here. Is that correct? A P here. So everybody knows that is sigma equal to P over A, because that's the how it's good. I change it to N for that. Then I give them this problem. And I put a P here. Is that correct or not? Is this problem has a sigma equal to P over A? You think? Come on, guys. I don't see anything. You're not seeing the difference between the two? Is this axial, no. axially loaded? No. 10, 15 people out of the 40 people or 45 people put here sigma equal to P over A because they are not thinking. They are only seeing. First of all, they didn't see it this way. They saw it this way. Everybody understand what I'm saying there? Since they saw it this way, they saw a P. And said, okay, sigma must be P over. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. If they are there, they have to take MB218 one more time. Is that correct? Or Look what is there. That one is axially loaded. Remember, because when you cut it here, the force is right at the centroid. Is that correct? Actually, if it is not at the centroid, we have a problem there. Is that correct? This one actually is... A bending. That's what chapter 4 is all about. This load causes here a bending. Look at it. Put a load at that end, my friend. You see that? This is bending. Has nothing to do with P over A. Everybody see what I'm talking about? The, we call it P because there is a vertical force. So be it. Not every P is sigma equal to P over A. Everybody getting the answer to that? So you should not make that kind of mistake in this class or ever. So this is a bending problem. This is a, as a matter of fact, there is a force also going up this way because against that, which become a shear problem, which is chapter six, by the way. We are going to go to chapter six for this one. Again, one more time. This is the one we are talking about right now at the bending. Has nothing to do with this problem. Everybody understand that. Therefore, this is what I'm going to change that in order, as, I, as the beginning I knew this problem, that's why I changed it from P to 
And in order you do not make that mistake, hopefully everybody understands what I'm saying. That. Then in chapter 2 or 3, sorry, we went to the shaft design. We already talked about it. We end up with tau equal to plus minus Tc over J. Is that correct or not? Yep. And then in chapter 4, we just were talking, finishing that, sigma was become equal to this. This sigma is this sigma, I remember. This sigma, but coming from different source. Is that correct or not? That sigma was equal to what? Plus minus, you just saw it, m c over, or m y in general, you are right, m y over i. But on the top, we call it m c over i, the sigma max. Is that correct or not? By the way, this was also max. So if I put here m max, if I put a max here, I have to change y to c. But that's OK. That's the distribution of a stress. You are right, MC. Now look what happened in the, this series of problem, which we call it eccentric loading. Now, if the load, look at it. I just show it this way for everybody to understand that. If I put here a plate here, a larger plate here, and a larger plate here, if I put here P at the centroid of this rod, that becomes this one. Yes or no? Correct? But I'm going to put this P here, which has a distance of A from the centroid. Is this sigma equal to P over A? What's going to happen to this, this item? It's going to bend. And it is very simple. So there should not be really any problem. But people do not see that, because this becomes basically an aesthetic problem, or either become equilibrium or equivalent. You have to decide on that one. You can do two things, guys. You can cut it here. Anything that you put here will be in equilibrium with that. Is that correct or not? Or you can shift this from here to here, which is the equivalent. Remember, in a static, we learned that if you move a force from point A to point B, you have to add a couple to it. Is that the force become a force and a couple? That's the reason everybody knows the detail of it doesn't matter. That's exactly what I did. These are the action. Here are the react. This is internal. This is external. I'm going to do both of them in order for you not to make mistake. If you change this, because some of your homework, you have to do that. If you change here to this force, this is equilib equi equivalent. Is that correct or not? So that is equivalent to a force like that. It was pushing like that. You need this M. Is that correct? And that M become P times A. That's what we had in the static. Is that correct or not? Yes? That's one option. Then when you come here, look what happened. When you come to this part of a beam, which is the internal part, now you have to balance this. Is that correct or not? Therefore, it becomes here a, look, these two together become chapter one. Yes or no? Correct? And then since I have a couple here, I have to put a couple there. Is that correct or not? This is the system in equilibrium. So which, what do you have? I have now, of course, we, don't talk, we are not talking about this. First of all, you have to understand that. You never add this to these two, because they are our two different nature. These are perpendicular to the section. This is in the section. So that's out. But these two can happen together. That's what we are talking about. Yes or no? It just happened there. Yes. You have a centric loading plus a moment, yes? So you have to add this together. So therefore, your stress is here. This is chapter 1 or 2. This is chapter 4. Write it down. Here, the stress is sigma at this cross section become either plus minus. Of course, you, can, you have to decide out that P over A, which is the result of centric loading. Yes or no? And then plus and minus what? Plus minus of? Bending, is that correct? The bending causes that to become a moment. So MC over I, they are the same type. Remember, I cannot add the shear stress to these two, but I can add these stresses together. MC or MY over I, depend whether you are outside, inside, etc., etc. That's how you do it. So we call it eccentric loading. So all you have to do, take your load to the all the load to the centroid of the cross section and decide whether you have that or not, whether they are in tension or they are in compression. Everybody understood the static part of it, yes? Okay? 
So this happened a lot, by the way. This is very simple. You don't have to go any further than, than this. This is a column. You put the load at the, right at the centroid. The sigma here becomes force over area. As soon as I put my force here, for example, or here on the side, remember, I'm not at the center. Look what happened to this. It's going to bend. Is that I have the force there still, but aside from the force, I have a causing a eccentric moment. Is that correct? Or that? Because I have to push everything back to the centroid. It's a very simple operation, but the student, I don't know whether, because maybe if I jump suddenly into do, I do not explain all of that, you will not get it right. Is that understood what I'm talking about? So let's go to a couple of examples. Now, the examples are now very simple. Now we are talking eccentric loading. Now remember all the aspect of that. Everything should, look what I said, everything should go to the centroid, yes or no, of the cross section. So here it is. Here is a clamp type structure. So here it is like this. So we have this. Symmetrical, again, this is symmetrical, whether it's the same thickness or not, that this time doesn't matter. And here we put the cable here. We pull it with the force here, with the force here. This force P is given equal to uh, 500 pounds, I believe. Let me get my numbers so we know what we are talking about, the same question. So we have finished this, we have finished this. Okay, 500 pound force is given, given there. So, okay, the distance from here to here is two inches. Let's say I ask you to calculate the stresses at point A and B in this section here. Finding, that's the question, the stresses at point A and B, somewhere between the two, because it's the same, doesn't make any difference. Okay. And all, now, the cross section there, the cross section of that part is something like this. Is everybody, it is, has a height and it is a thickness, the thickness you don't see. It. Is that correct or not? Yeah? So therefore, is the blade, so in other words, the cross section is 0.70 or three quarter of an inch by half an inch, maybe a little bit wider than that. Should be wider if that's that the case. It's three quarter of an inch by half an inch. Is that correct or not? Yes? How do we do that? The first step is the static. I just told you. The problem is with the static. People are reluctant to draw free body. Diagram. Without free body diagram, from now on, you are not going to get anywhere. Now, I'm giving you another example. I want you to understand what are we going to hit next, which is funny at the same time, but you will be surprised how much progress we have made. Look, let's look at this. Every day, every, you are driving to school or coming, we are one way or another, you are seeing all the traffic light, yes or no? Let's look at one of these traffic lights. I can give you at the end this problem which covers chapter one to chapter seven, maybe even more. Is that correct? Well, one problem only. Look what happened there. There is a light here, this way, this way. I don't know how, how the light here. Okay? Yes? This has a weight, correct? You don't have to write anything down. And then the wind blows this way. We have a horizontal force here, F. For, for, yes or no? This is also have a W. Now, when I come here, do I have Axial force there. The weight, look at this. It doesn't have to be here. This weight and this weight all to have to come at the center of that one. Yes or no? Is that the weight pushing down? Of course it does. Yes? So it is chapter one. Does it create this force? Does it create a torsion here? Chapter three. Does it this bend this way? Chapter four. Does it bend actually this way? There is more than even chapter four, so we have to do. So all, everything that you know, want to know is happening, that one, that one simple problem. Pretty soon, we are going to put all of this together, so do problem like that, everybody. Because we bought, first we have to go through chapter one, two, three, four, five, and six. Everybody, under, we have two more chapters to finish all the detail. Chapter seven is all about that and more. Is that understood? Yes? So therefore, they are, for the first time, we are combining chapter one by chapter four. Did you see the equation I gave you? One was sigma equal to what? 
P over A, the other one, sigma was equal to MC over I. They are from the same type, so we have to add it together. Is that understood? Okay, fine. So now let's go here, draw the free body diagram. So you can draw the free body diagram of the left hand side or free body diagram of the right hand side. Where should I put my internal forces now? No. Many people, when I give this problem, if they don't hear me like this, they put Take, take, first of all, they, they don't know. They said, okay, there is a here force equal to 500, yes or no, in the form of tension or compression. First of all, I should not put it at A. I should not put it at B. I should put, put that at C, which is the centroid of the, centroid of the cross section. Is that correct or not? Okay, so I have here a P going that way. I have to have here an N. The value of N is equal to 500 pounds. This is internal, that is external, yes or no. So I have chapter one there, yes or no, correct? Do I have, it? is this a couple? Everybody can see that this is already a couple. So this cannot stay like that unless I add a moment. I cannot add a moment here, but I can add a moment into the cross section to make it in Equilibrium. Now, this one, the first one that I show you was equivalent, but this one is equilibrium. Whatever action you see here, you have to reverse it. So the action is going that way, so the reaction is there, or you can use any other method. This is, the, so this is your M, because the sum of the moment now about this point become equal to zero, everybody. Because this going moment this way, that will move it that way. And that M equal to what? This is a static part of it. As I said, many people have problem with the static part of it because they do not, first of all, distinguish between equilibrium and equ equivalent. That's the two differences. Right now, I use equilibrium. Everybody understand the whole system has to be in. When you do the entire free body diagram, the whole system has to be in equilibrium. That's right. So the action, look at it. If I take the moment about here, for example, about this one, this one had does a moment, this moment is positive, this moment is negative, they cancel each other. However, what's the value of M now? The idea, or, no, exactly, you see? Like what you said, that's what I don't want you to do. You said 1,000 because you multiply, look at your picture, you multiply it by 2, yes or no? Correct? If you multiply it by 2 for point B, what do you multiply it by 2 and point 0.75 for point A? Both of them absolutely wrong. You should take everything to, look how many times I'm repeating that. You should take everything to the centroid, yes or no? The moment everything that we did here, everything start from centroid. This is the biggest mistake everybody makes. The point A and B has something to do with the distribution of a stress. Everybody, you should move it, everything to center. I said many times we show the beam as a line. That line is the centroid line. Is that correct or not? So what should I multiply that? 500 by? 2 plus what? Half a distance. That's right. So please, do not make that mistake. That's, a, that's the, exactly the one I, the, I don't want you to do. Times 2 inches, because from here to here is 2 inches, correct. Then I have to add this much to it. So because we are taking moment about C, remember that, which is the centroid. So 2 inches time plus 0.75 divided by 2. OK, great. So we did that part. So that become equal to the moment become 1,187.5. I, I can reduce it to less digit if you want to, but that's the way they did it here. So I'll keep it like that. Pound inch of moment. Very important key. I hope that you do not make that mistake. Point A and B is not, doesn't matter. You have to move everything to the centroid. In other words, the system doesn't work for every problem from the out. Is that understood? Yes. OK, so now the system becomes very simple. Now I have this much moment, which is chapter 4. I have this much force, which is chapter. Again, now for point A, what do you think for i I'm going to erase that, do all the calculation here, underneath here. because So let's say M was equal to 1,187 half. And, and rewrite it there, but okay. So here it is, sigma a. So can you see it, or should I give more, more explanation? Sigma a due to this, is it tension or compression? 
Forget about M. Look at this one. This is chapter one. Due to this is a purely tension, yes or no? So it is P over or N over A, correct? Uh, because of the bending, is it tension or compression? Look at the head of that. Which one is compression? Come on, guys. Compression, yes or no? Yes? It's sitting there. What, this? <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you guys. Anyhow, this is chapter one. Yes or no? This is point A. This is point B. You have a force there. You're always thinking of force. I ask you not to think about the force. Think about the stress. Yes or no? The stress is uniformly distributed from top to bottom. I, exactly what I ask you not to do. Forget about the formula. Think about the stress distribution, then everything will become resolved. Yes or no? That is stress is due to the P or N. Is that correct or not? Doesn't matter. On top, bottom, center, everything is uniformly distributed stress. Then, at the same section, I have, this is the same section. Doesn't, doesn't matter. This is again point A and this is point B. What do I have this time? I have a Mo bending moment. I already, we already know that. So let's put the two and two together. What's the effect? Which, which way the bending goes? The bending goes like that, yes? So here is compression. Here is compression means this, which is a little bit larger because we'll see the bend. And this is the tension, yes or no? On the centroid, the stress is zero. So therefore, this is it. What stress do I have at A? Plus N over A minus... MC over I, yes or no? Come on, guys. Okay. <laughs> yes? Some of you are still not happy. I can see it there. I can see it right in front row. Okay? <laughs> not looking at me. The person in chat. Okay. <laughs> Did you get it? Yes? Good. Okay. Sigma B, then what? Because sigma B equal to? Sigma B equal to? N over A, good. You have to write it your own. Then what? Plus MC over. That's it. All I need now, the I of this cross section, I of this cross section is 112 of 0.5 times 0.75 to the power of 2. Area I need, which is 0.5 times 0.75. I leave the rest to you because that's the number we have done it many, many times. Is that correct? I give you the result. Is that understood? I is there, A is there, M is there, N is there, everything is there. Is that correct? And the C, of course, is the C is the half a distance from the C to the top. We already know about that. Is that correct or not? Yes? So this one, let's write it down. So this one, sigma A, become equal to 1,000, as I recall, so it has become 1,333 positive PSI. And minus, because this, is my, because this is repeat, minus 25,330. This is much larger than the other one for this problem. So it ends up to be equal to minus 24 KSI. So on the top, of course, this is PSI. I want you to I'll change it to KSI, to 24,000. Because 1,330 of that, and that one drops out. There is a 3 here, if you want to be exact. And the other one, sigma b, become equal to 1,330 t plus 25,330 approximately. So that one become equal to plus 26.7 KSI. So that's the combination of, because we have, for the first time, we have an eccentric loading. And eccentric loading is the combination of chapter 1 and chapter 4. Here, it has a chapter combination of all the chapter together, which we'll talk about it later on. Is that understood? Now, what's the sigma at the centroid? What's the sigma at the centroid? Zero. You see many people. Is the sigma at the centroid zero? Look at it. Look at the picture. Is the sigma at centroid equal to zero? No. That's exactly my point. Because just before you answer, think, think, think. This is what when I was in IBM working for IBM, everyone in front of us, we have this sign, and it was saying, think, think. That was the law. But at that time, you weren't born, so you don't know what we were talking about. At that time, computer was the huge computer with little memory. Is that anyhow? So, punch card.
We have the data, we have to punch cart and then put it there, push it there. <laughs> tape was coming out, all those tapes. In the old movie, you'll see it. Anyhow, <laughs> so before you do saying anything, think about this. Is that correct or not? What's the stress at this point, C? Here is? Here is? OK, glad. OK, sigma at C equal to N over? A, because you have it zero if it is moment. You were right in a way. It was moment only. Is that correct or not? But it's not a moment only. It is the combination. So, can you tell me where the stress is zero? I have asked that question in the quizzes. Can you find where the stress is zero? First of all, let's say that if this is the section, the stress zero is here or here, lower than C or upper than C. Upper than C. Absolutely correct. Why? Because they have to cancel each other. Everybody understand? You have this much, 1,300. You have to go up here to get, this is the tension. You have to get that much compression. The two together must cancel each other, yes? So actually, this becomes a geometry problem. How much Y should I go there that this sigma and this sigma become equal, the sum become equal to zero? So you calculate the location of the Y. Or you can use similar triangle geometry. Is that understood? I have asked that question before. Just to throw in for two, three points at the end of the final to see the difference between you guys, different A and A minus. So let's put it this way. <laughs> Everybody see what I'm talking about? Because it's important to understand what we are talking about. Is that understood? Yes? Since the stress here is, some of you are still looking zero, therefore, and this is the tension, so I have to go higher here to get this tension and this compression cancel each other to some become equal to. Zero. Based on that, you can calculate because it becomes my over i, so you calculate the value of i. Or you can use the similar triangle to get that, that height. Is that understood? Because there are two triangles. OK. Now, there is one more problem I want to discuss. How much time do I have? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Good. So I have enough time to discuss a few things with you. Now, there are a couple of homework given to you that the student usually panic when they look at it there. Many of them is at that source. So all you have to do, go to the cross section in question, draw your free body diagram, find the direction of your force and the direction of the moment. Sometimes moment is this way, sometimes moment is that way. That just changes your plus and minuses, nothing else. Is that correct or not? However, to just understand what we are doing here, let's say that we have here a column and this column, also this problem is in your book, it has a 10 inch by 8 inch cross section. I want you to understand the system rather than having it like that. Let's assume this side and that side are different from each other. The ratio of 10 to 8 inch, is that correct or not? Yeah? Like any column, you see that behind you, this, uh, this column, yeah? almost like that. Is that correct or not? Now, if the load, so there is a center here. The center is the everything center. So if I put a load here, P, at the center of, of this column, this is chapter one. This become axially load. Actually, the name axially loaded member, you should pay attention to that. It means when the load is on the centroid of the cross section. Is that, otherwise, it will, not, it will be eccentric. Otherwise, it creates moment, as simple as that. And by the way, we never have axially loaded memory. It's impossible to put the load right at the center. If you go by real design in the code, always say, take this much eccentricity. Because who can, who can guarantee that your load goes right at the center? Exactly the point. Obviously, there is some variation there. Now, if I put the load here, P, and this distance is given, let's say, one and a half inches. What have I done here? Is this centric load or is it eccentric load? Eccentric. eccentric. Now, how much moment do I have? You see, this is the static part that some people, many people do it correctly, but I have to review it with you one more time, hoping that everybody will be on the face. Which direction is the moment? Should I put the moment like that or should I put moment like that? I should put the moment like that. In other words, this is the equivalent system. Before you go here, underneath showing anything, you, this is equivalent, no, this is not equilibrium. I have to move this P, which is applied to po at point B, bring it to point C. So if I do that, this is an equivalent, remember that. I do not have to, to reverse it. 
Notice I take the P, exactly put it there. Is that correct or not? But which side was the push? Which side was the pull? This side was the push. This side was the pulling up. So the moment goes like that. Is that correct or not? Yes? Correct? All right. So in this, if I'm here, I have here a cross section. I put B here so I cannot use B here. So I can use A, C, D, E. Which line is under compression? Because of the bend. First of all, because of this, point A, B, C, A, I'm sorry, not B, A, E, C, D, they are under uniformly pressure of P over A. Yes or no? All of them. Negative, correct? In every part, here, 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 here. Is that. So in other words, I have here a force at the center. Everything here would be under compression. That's a no brainer. Is that brainer? Yes? But if I come to point C or D, what about the moment, what should I do? Is it tension or is it compression? compression. Compre Where is the compression? This is all is in? This is all in? Tension. Where is the neutral axis? Is it? Is it x-axis or this is, let's call it, this is x, y, z. Is the neutral axis, is x-axis or it is the z-axis? Z. 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 Yeah, absolute. Everybody with me? The neutral axis right now is the z because all you have to do, guys, put your right hand rule here. Yes, the thumb indicate that. So the, this is not the neutral axis. This is because you are bending it this way. Is that correct? Or not? Yes? Everybody with me aesthetically? Back there, okay, <laughs> All right, right, because I, this problem I have seen, in ME219 people make mistake. I, I'm just teaching you the way I want nobody make mistake. Because I give them this, I give them a cross section like that, no matter what, they use 112 uh, based on height U. For this problem, base is here, height is there, because this is your neutral axis. Everybody see what I'm talking about, yes? Okay, however, if I put the load here, now what I have done? I create a bending that way. Everybody understand that? In that case, the bending will be like that. The load comes here. Again, the same thing. But this time, this is in compression. This is in. And this is the neutral axis. Everybody understand? So we have a bending. So when you go to your homework problem, just see which way it is bending and take the proper neutral Access, you are done. Is that understood? So please do not make a mistake. Don't assume always because the cross section given like that. This is what people make a mistake. It's cross section given like a rectangular cross section like this. Don't assume this is the base, this is high. Depend whether you have bending like that or not. In other words, this is I can show you one more time. Just give me a couple of more minutes. I have one more problem to discuss, just to discuss with you. Here it is. I do this way. Here is compression. Here is Tension, this is the neutral axis. I do it this way. Here is compression. Here the head of the, this head is the compression of. And the thumb is always is the neutral. So one more problem before you go because I want you to do all your homework. Today is the, nobody has quiz today. So the office hours is very, very probably empty. As I said, you come and see me there. Plus the fact, one more thing. Many of you are going to pass this course next summer, next, uh, next spring, next fall. What course? Somebody asked me that. What course are you going to take? You, I checked it with the department. You are going to take the 219 cap for mechanical engineer, or are you going to take 219 regular? Mm -hmm. I suggest you take 219 regular because in that course we are going to repeat chapter five, six, seven of this string one more time, and it's very important for you to review that. But I asked the department. They said you are allowed. You already asked it. They said you can take it. Actually, that's you should. Everybody, even you are a student here. I would suggest that you don't take the cap, take the ME219 one more time, which is 15 week. Part of it is two, this is for mechanical engineers. I'm sorry, this is only for mechanical engineers. So take that course because it gives you extra, extra work. Now, one more question before I leave that. I want to, there is another problem. Quickly, I want to mention that. There is another clamp-like system like that, which is exactly like the way I did. Remember this clamp? They changed the direction of it. Is that understood? So they put here, they put the P here. They put a P here, which is exactly what I did at the beginning. Remember that? And then they said this. They said here, that's the only difference between the two. The P is not given this time. The P is not given.
but sigma max is given. So sigma max is given, but p is question. You have to answer that. But instead of that, they put here, you see, they said strain. Strain is epsilon. There is a gauge there. The epsilon is measured, let's say, equal to 1,000 micro, either plus or minus. That's beside the point. They are asking you to calculate the value of p. The key to this problem is from what I, you were doing in previous quiz. Epsilon is the same as sigma. You have to use the relationship. Remember, epsilon was equal to what? Epsilon was equal to sigma divided by modulus of? Yeah. So if I give you epsilon, in effect, I have given you the sigma. Remember, so sigma for this point is given. So sigma A is given. But instead, P is not given. But remember, sigma at that point is equal to plus minus P over A or plus minus MC over I. And M and P will be expressed in form of P. Everybody understands. So you're unknown because sigma is given. So you are looking for the value of the P. So it's the same problem in Reverse, the only key is turning epsilon into sigma. That's the only thing. So the rest is exactly the same. So by saying that, you should be able to do next, this next week. We are going to go to chapter 5, which is shear and moment diagram. It is two diff a totally different category. We have three more chapters, three more weeks left. So we have to finish all of them. Thank you.